All right, let's call this meeting to order at 105. Um, first item of business is the minutes. So I realized that I did not send out <laughs> the minutes uh, last month. So hopefully uh, Michelle and Robbie had a chance to look over the minutes. Do you have any comments about the minutes? All right. No, they were fabulous fine with them. Thank you, Fred. Okay, great. I will submit those to Matt um, after the meeting then for the last two meetings. Uh, next item of business is the public works update. Mr. Harmon. Thank you, Mr. Bush. I have a few items. I'll try to go through them quickly. Um, today is March 23rd. Uh, we are uh, wrapping up our snow season uh, as far as our equipment goes, getting everything washed and um, put away. Uh, it only takes us about 24 hours to restock those items and uh, put them back into play if uh, a late storm does occur. Uh, but we're in the midst of doing that uh, now that the weather is favorable. Uh, spring planning for the parks and playgrounds. Uh, we have some uh, small plantings that we're doing up at Sabine Avenue and around uh, Narbos Park. Of course, we're working on the baseball field uh, fairly consistently over the last uh, couple of weeks uh, since that is in use now uh, by the Little Leagues. Uh, the baseball netting, the netting for Haverford Avenue, uh, the posts are here and they're actually being installed as we speak. Uh, we're waiting for the cable to arrive uh, to spring the netting up. Uh, that's on its way today. Uh, they're, they are calling for rain tomorrow, so we're just going to see how far we can get today as far as stringing that up, but it should be uh, completed by the end of this week at the latest. Uh, electrical vehicles charging station. I met with the uh, electrical contractor about a half hour ago. Uh, for the station behind the library. Uh, he hopes to have that in by the end of this week. Uh, and then he's going to proceed with the one up on Forest. Um, so we're, we're underway with those two uh, projects as well. The, the, all, all of the materials for, uh, for the electrical vehicle charging stations and components are all here. Uh, we just need the contractor to uh, make the connections, put in the meters, and, and hook them up. Uh, Dudley Avenue, as you may have heard through council, uh, we are uh, putting out to bid uh, paving the two, three, and 400 block of Dudley Avenue this year. Um, I don't have any other updates other than the, the um, bid process is going out uh, in the newspapers this week. Uh, so it takes uh, several weeks before we will have any other results uh, on that. And Eric can comment further if he wants to, uh, or at the time, you know, wait until the time uh, is right when we do have those bids received. Uh, that's all the items I have. Are there any other questions for Public Works? Anybody have any questions? Um, I did see the street sweeping, I think, truck go out uh, today, so good to see Yes, that. we are we are street sweeping. Um, again, downtown uh, usually gets uh, swept fairly regularly, uh, but we're spreading around uh, while we have these cold mornings. Uh, we can generally run the street sweeper uh, before we get into our parks and, and other playground duties. Uh, so we are running that as, as much as possible now, yes. Great. All right. Um, thanks, Sam. Uh, we have potential action item for Borough Council at the next business meeting. It's listed as a potential action item. I don't know where we stand on it. So this is um, a sidewalk repair project for uh, the borough-owned uh, sidewalk. Uh, we've got this budgeted for this year, but you know, <laughs> things have gotten a little complicated this year. So uh, we haven't really discussed it much. Um, uh, so I brought it up with Matt and, uh, and Ed, and uh, I think it sounds like we might be able to, to go forward with it this year after all. So Ed, uh, do you have any more 
details on um, where we stand on planning this out? Well, I can defer to Eric on this, but we have counted the blocks. Uh, there's a number of blocks along the Haverford Avenue side uh, of Narberth Park from North Windwood down in the municipal building. There are some minor repairs at the municipal building, the front and side stairways uh, could use some repairs, uh, but we're looking to combine that with uh, some other work uh, that we're doing within the borough. Um, and uh, like I said, Eric, if you have any expansion on that that you'd like to offer, uh, I, I guess uh, I'm gonna defer to you, but we, we do hope to, to move forward with the, the, this, these projects, yes. Um, yeah, so I guess the kind of the, the topic for discussion would be is so we, we have the, um, is where, is there any particular place that we're looking to allocate those funds? So if that area with those funds want to be allocated is in and around the municipal complex and in and around the park, then I believe that probably the best way to go forward is actually just to combine that work with uh, the Haverford Avenue storm sewer project that uh, you know, we're coming into a final design with now uh, and hope to be bidding in the near future uh, because we already have sidewalk work as a bid item in that contract and it's a contractor in the area. Um, so if that park area is where you want to focus, then I think that's probably going to be the best way forward um, to get that work done. Well, I mean, the idea was to to repair the sidewalks and those are where the borough owns sidewalks, basically. I mean, mm -hmm. they own a little bit, you know, they own around the municipal building and around, there's a little bit around the parking. There's a couple of broken segments around the um, the parking on Haverford Avenue, the, you know, the, the, a lot behind the Haverford Avenue shops. The mm -hmm. entrance to that is all busted up too. But um, so, I mean, that, that's that's where the broken segments are. So I think it, it would make sense to. Okay, yeah. So then I think we can operate under uh, combining that in, that'd be the most effective use to get that work done. Uh, and then depending on where funding ends up, you know, the, the smaller projects in and around, uh, you know, the other properties, uh, you know, that's work that always could just be done contracted separately, you know, those type of projects would even come in under bidding thresholds, you know, where the contract, where the borough could just get, uh, you know, price quotes and contract with, with uh, for some smaller projects. Okay. Uh, what's the timeline on that Haverford storm sewer? Uh, we have, so I have the final design, the, the plan, design plans are together. Uh, I was just doing some markups on them earlier today. So, um, you know, we're looking in the next, hopefully bidding in the next few months on that project. So that would be all work that could be done within this this upcoming summer. Okay. Um, sounds good to me. Any other comments? Robert, just, just as a note Go for ahead. around the Narberth Park, uh, the sidewalk conditions are the poorest on the Haverford Avenue side, which is why we focused uh, counting the blocks over there. Uh, there are uh, more curbing issues on the Windsor Avenue side, uh, but the sidewalk blocks themselves are in better shape uh, as far as smoothness and deflection uh, issues. Uh, so that's why we focus more on the Haverford Avenue side with this, this project. So we're thinking we're only going to do the Haverford Avenue part right now. That's your, that's your suggestion to work it in with this other project and then to do the Windsor segments later? Uh, I, I think it makes sense to do that for a pedestrian safety issue uh, standpoint because of the block uh, cracks and, and deflection. Uh, like I said, whereas on the Windsor Avenue side, the blocks are much safer, much more secure. It's the curbing that needs uh, more work on Windsor. Okay. All right, well, uh, I guess we'll see where the, uh, how this project ends up, how the uh, Haverford project ends up. Um, Robert, Michelle, do you have any comments or questions about this? Uh, no, I think that makes sense, Fred. I'm glad you're uh, including the sidewalk. Yeah. I mean, Sorry, okay. I was just about to say, all right, I was, uh, then I would, um, I'll just coordinate with Ed and we'll get the specific locations and um, we'll go from there. Okay, great. 
All right, let's uh, move on to the next item on our agenda, which is um, our guests. So we have, uh, I asked um, the rec board um, to come and talk about their uh, request, their, their request that require council attention for the, uh, for the park. And I asked NAA to come and talk about um, their vision for the tennis courts. Um, uh, Melissa has been, you know, looking into uh, what it would take to refurbish the tennis courts for a long time. So, uh, I I was going to talk um, both about the the initial rec board. I was supposed to talk about the signs initially, and then I can talk about the tennis courts. Okay. If that's uh, okay. However, however, the two of you want to split yeah, up. Yeah, but I, I I prepared a, a a long thing on the signage. Okay. Um, Go ahead. So, um, so basically we have been talking about signage at Narberth Park and Sabine Park. Um, we first addressed this issue in 2018 and then we submitted a Narberth uh, Parks policy uh, application on how to like do a permit for the park if you're an outside user. We established some park and playground rules and regulations, a fee table, and we submitted that to um, the borough and borough council. Um, once again, in 2019, January, we, we recommended a follow-up on this and a signage for the parks. Um, basically, one of the, like, a park name at, at entrance for each of the two parks. Um, the rules of the park to be stated in a brief sign, um, bathroom sign at Narberth for direction, and a parking lot sign direction to how to get to Narberth Park, the back way by the um, basketball courts. Um, currently, there are two signs at Narberth Park. I mean, at Sabine, um, I have a picture. I don't really know how to share it, but they're pretty old and they're faded. It just says Narberth Recreation Board rules, no bike riding, no dogs, no golf, no alcoholic beverages, borough ordinances 259 and 679. There's two of those signs. Um, at Narberth Park, there's, we only have eight signs of just saying walking of dogs um, on borough property permit, prohibited. Um, we would like the borough, this, this infrastructure just to recommend if we can further, you know, have signs put up. Um, there's 10 entrances to Narberth Park and three entrances to Sabine Park. Um, we would like to just go over a list within our own committee on a brief, you know, basically on the new ordinances, which we're not clear if these two ordinances even are still on the books as you just say, but to have like no bike riding, no dogs, obviously no alcohol beverages if we see that fit and some other uh, rules that we wanna recommend to put on the signs. That's just an update of what we've been doing for the signage. Oh, and no smoking was to be added. Yeah, we talked about signing onto that. Mm -hmm. We just weren't sure of the, the current, just... you know, there's old ordinances that list on the sign up in Sabine, we don't know if they really still exist, but we wanted us to bring it back if we have approval to move on to get signs, go back to the committee and really finalize a, a brief list and also help with the design of the signs, what they're made up, their location they be put up, and also to have entrance names for the park. We really don't have that. It's, it's sort of a nice touch that a lot of parks around here have, especially in the township. What, what kind of sign? I mean, I, I know what the, the no whatever signs would look like, but what would this entrance sign look like? Are you talking about like a very We don't know. Large... We just say, okay. no, nothing large. We would just have a couple, come up with a couple designs and take a couple pictures. We're, or most, that's, you know, that's a secondary, but uh, really we do like the rules to be posted at all the entrances, an updated list of rules. It would just be helpful. So Ed, um, what would that take from the borough's end to get those signs made and put them up, how much, uh, what's the process for that? Well, again, uh, as Melissa pointed out, I have to check with the codes and ordinances to make sure that there's not a conflict there. Um, it, then it would depend on the verbiage of the signs, what, what content we wanna have on them. Uh, if we wanna have the borough logo, uh, you mentioned park entrance nomenclature. Do we need to name each entrance or just can we have the logo with Narberth Park entrance 
East B or something shorter. I, I don't I don't know. So the, the verbiage would have to be worked out. Uh, I'm assuming you're you're talking aluminum uh, type of uh, panels. Uh, they're fairly uh, easy and uh, quick to um, uh, generate, so that that should not be a problem. But uh, those uh, earlier variables all predict the the cost of of the project. All right. So. Um... All right. So request for, for more, I mean, you're thinking that the, like the welcome to signs would be separate from the, the other signs or there, there would be like a little note on your welcome to Nar Narvith Park. No dogs. But I think, no. I think we're happy to work with the borough on, on creating these signs, but it's been three or four years of asking for them and we've never had a process to actually get anything done. And in the meantime, we have we rely heavily on volunteers who are eating up an extraordinary amount of time undoing damage from bicycles, for example. And so yeah. your volunteers that you're defend you're really depending on are begging and pleading, please put up some signs keeping bikes off the baseball fields. So this has to get done. If there are Whatever the process is, we just really need one, a process, because we can't go year after year doing the same conversation. So, Fred? Yeah, and, uh, go ahead, Michelle. My, my, my suggestion is that as a committee, we um, make sure that we recommend that this gets put into the um, capital. Uh, it might be less than the capital improvement. It depends on the cost. If the sum total is, what is it, 1000 or something, um, it may go in the capital improvement plan and otherwise that we you know, recommend budgeting for these signs. I think that they're necessary. I, I'm very thankful for the work that you've done to look into this and to press for this. I think we should do that. The only thing I would say is that before we, we, we go to, you know, we go to have them manufactured in addition to looking to see if the current regulations and ordinances are in place. And I'm sure they're at least renumbered probably in the new code because a lot of things were renumbered. If there are regulations that it sounded like maybe smoking isn't maybe in the code and you wanted to add it. I wasn't sure if I understood that right, but if there are regulations that should be added, whatever they are, smoking, vaping, I don't know, this is the best time to do it before we print the signs. So we have, uh, you know, an ordinance in place uh, that we can reference on the sign. But I say, I think this is something that clearly is, well, way overdue to be done. So uh, thank you for bringing it. I, I strongly support doing whatever it takes to move this forward. So, yeah, there was a there was a like a healthy or healthy heart initiative for no smoking in the parks, and I just can't remember what we what happened to it. You know, it was discussed, and I and I have to look and see if we did anything with it. So I think that, you know, I, I also agree that this should move forward. So what I would recommend is we bring it up at council as new business, and assuming council is you know is fine with it, Ed sit down with somebody from. Um, rec board and just hammer it out. I mean, I mean, Ed, it sounds right? to me like if we're talking about potentially as many as 13 signs, that's why I was maybe hearing 10, 10 in Arbor, three at Sabine at each entrance. This may be, you know, something that goes in the capital improvement budget under parks. Um, I'm well, guessing. I, I, I think, that, I I think the, sim the simplest thing would be to put up the no, you know, to, 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 to put up the don't do this signs. I think that those are uh, my, my understanding really was that but let's, let's get clarification. I thought you were saying that, that, that those would go at, at each entrance and that the sort of welcome entrance that sign was separate. But you know what? Clarification. Um, can you speak to that? Um, Parks yes. and Recreation? Yeah. I'm sorry, I can't see anybody. So I'm awful. sorry, uh, Michelle, this is Melissa. I just wanted to say that our Thank primary, you. as our primary goal was to get the, the, the rules sign and the secondary was to get like just a general sign that says Norbert Park and Sabine Park and whatever format. But did but you want general... a rule sign at every entrance? Yes. That's... Yeah, so that would be 13 yes. rule signs, right? Yes. Okay, that's what I was thinking. So that to me says that might go under the capital budget. And so we might, you know, want to make sure that we, you know, maybe that's our place to, to ensure that we've set aside the funding for it. Um, I mean, there is, there is I mean, some parks money in the, there's already, I mean, yeah, but I, I think that 13 signs is probably not going to be more than a thousand, right? I mean, I, I don't know for these 
Um, What's your I, sense, Ed? How much? Of... But let's 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 bring it to council and, and see. I mean, I, I think that um, I mean not as a committee, but, but, but you know, uh, the council should just be able to approve it without. The first step is definitely to review review the existing regulations and ordinances, and then if we need to add more, that's you know that's I think that we should then you know work with the solicitor to craft that to make those modifications. That takes you know it takes a couple months to get that because you have to advertise it and you have to have a here you know you have to do the whole thing that you do to pass an ordinance. So we want it in place like by the summer, timely. You know we should just probably start planning to start with a really. Uh, Can we could yeah, we we'll get really drill down into the existing regulations? Could we get approval from Council to spend up to $1,500 on signs pending review by um, this committee and the um, solicitor? Probably, but Michelle is saying that we might also want to, you know, some of the things that you're going to suggest in the signs are not in our ordinances. Right. And if and if that right. becomes an issue, we would bring it back. But we would have this approval to make signs pending that they're legal, and you guys are okay yeah, with the I, look and feel of them. Yeah, I think that makes sense. I think we should budget for the signs, move that along. They're parallel tracks. Like it doesn't, it can budget for the signs, and but we can also start the process of making sure that we get everything on the signs that we want. And if we have to update our ordinances and regulations, then we do that. And then hopefully we could all, you know, could all come together like the summer or something that would be I would like to see that well, is, right. it reasonable? is there money in the parks line already to support yeah this? I mean there's there's money there's there's annual money in the budget for um the parks um I'd have to look and see how much but I, I don't I mean we, we haven't done any new projects in the parks mm -hmm. um so there there should be budget space for this um without yeah and I just I just want to you know I, it's something I would support I also know we have um uh requests to uh renovate the bathroom and we also have requests to open the tennis courts oh you know, i think i think they'll continue <laughs> this is not the this oh, is not the end of, of the request it's just step yeah one. but right, i mean so, if we could look holistically at, at our park budget yeah all right so maureen we'll uh we'll bring that to council to full council um the, i think we're we're supportive of of signs um and yeah it would involve our solicitor um ed and you planning it out and then bringing it back to us once you have a final okay so we would respectfully okay. request that council actually vote on a resolution giving us permission under appropriate review rather than just we support this idea because we've been down this path too many times so i i'm happy to send yeah it, some it would have to be voted on at full council i understand but it's we just keep spinning our wheels on this stuff and like for me to spend time sitting down at meetings talking looking through you know what do we want to write figuring all that out only to have it sit again it's just it can't keep happening so I, I, I'll send you some wording but I would ask that council permit it under these lower level reviews that way we can actually move forward Okay, well, we will officially authorize it. Um, I'll, in some I'll send way at the, you at the full our meeting. request. Okay, thank you. I mean, I, I will push for that. <laughs> I can't guarantee it, but that's what I will recommend. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, what what else do you have for us? Okay, we can discuss the tennis courts. Or oh, Maureen, do you want to? No, I just want to say that. Um, so Melissa is here representing the NAA, and she's also in the rec board, so she's sort of representing both. But I just wanted to say that you know the tennis court was discussed extensively at many many meetings, and um, she has the rec board support behind what she's about to say. Um, I'll be really quickly brief just to update some people on, um, as I call it, the history of the tennis courts, which were last resurfaced in 2004. Um, they were done in 2004 and for since 2014 have been brought up with the borough council. And at the time it was a property committee. Um, 
We have talked about them since that time at the Parks and Rec Board. We have submitted them in the com comprehensive plan submitted to Borough Council that we worked with, with KCBA, um, and also submitted designs of the tennis courts. Um, it was also in a document in 2018, um, in February, in a long-term park recommendations. So this has been a long history of the tennis courts. Um, also within 2016, it went to Borough Council and they approved it um, preliminary, having the resurface done um, of the tennis courts. Um, we have gotten bids three times over since 2014. I had a couple other people helping me back in 2014. Um, the last current bid I just got done in January of 2020. And this is a person that always come, has come in at the lowest bid. It's Mark Bergen with Pro Sport Construction. Um, he has also been doing the resurfacing of the basketball courts over the years. Um, he's with the USTA, he does worldwide. Um, he also had grown up in Narberth and he knows the courts very well and knows the whole floodplain situation with the, the park. Um, he's provided a couple recommendations. You can either do an asphalt to give a little quick history, you can do an asphalt uh, resurface. And based on what's going on at Narberth Park, he said within two years, those cracks are gonna just open up again, just because of the surface underneath. Um, and also asphalt, he said, um, they use recycled asphalt and he, they found in the last 10 years, it's just not as sturdy and strong as what they used 20 years prior. Um, he recommends post-tension concrete, which is a similar to what they use in um, parking lots. It's a cable and tension um, inside to prevent cracking. He gives the durability <clears throat> lifetime of 50 plus years. He said basically they have not had any issues with it. Um, it's used and won't sink, it won't crack. And these are avoiding the two issues that we are currently having with the tennis courts. Um, their maintenance and repair, um, not much. There's none, he says, that maybe just a paint job within 10 years or brush up the, the lines. Um, and then he estimates it being 120,000 to 160,000. Um, we are, rec he's recommending we add it, well, we've talked about and we've had the community reach out on taking away either two of the tennis courts or one of the tennis courts. You can replace one tennis court with two pickleball courts. And I don't know if people are familiar with pickleball, but it's the fastest growing sport. It's for all ages, for everybody. Um, it can be for five-year-olds up to, you know, 85-year-olds. It's an easy sport. It's not expensive to play. There's not a huge skill level. Um, like you don't have to just, you know, take lessons forever. You know, it's just basically a, a little paddle and a wiffle ball with holes. Um, it's been in the country for 55 years and currently 3.3 million people are playing in the US. Um, there are eight permanent pickleball courts down in Havertown at Paddock Park and they're always packed. Lower Marion does not have any permanent courts at the time. They have lines painted and you can bring in temporary nets. So we're asking for uh, permanent nets to be put up. All the posts will be removable on the tennis and the pickleball because it's for storage and so they don't bend its um, durability. And uh, replacing and fixing the uh, fencing, making sure everything's ADA compliant. Um, uh, he recommends a windscreen on the fence for the backside because the basketball courts, we talked about that could be a sponsorship, some local sponsorship could you know, produce that. Um, and that is pretty much it. And you can also attach a hitting wall on one of the tennis courts, um, like a backboard for kids to practice on. Um, it's just an, it's been a long time. There's a lot of people on those tennis courts, especially obviously in COVID. Pickleball is a fun and easy sport to play. I don't know if anyone's had any um, experience. And that's pretty much, if anyone have any questions. So I know you, you talked in the past about um, having the USTA, uh, trying to acquire a USTA grant, but I think you told me that uh, with the pickleball element, the USTA is unlikely to be supportive of uh, <laughs> with a grant. Yeah, the pit, yeah. So the pickleball, yes. Back when I was working with the Mid-Atlantic USTA for their grants, 
Um, and, you know, when I talked to Bur uh, John Bur uh, Mark Bergen, he said that uh, he works with USDA all the time also, that th if we install the pickleball courts, they possibly will not, you know, grant us the uh, uh, parks and rec grant that they usually get, um, have. I've reached out to a couple other townships that uh, I'm friends with, and I've got um, some grants that Pennsylvania Rec through the Department of Conservation and National Resources, talking about a couple grants that we can talk to with them. Um, and then all the other funding we talked about that NEA um, could supply some part. We have NIDA, just looking at local fundraising, just that could be discussed further if we get approval. Any other questions? I, I, I would be curious to see the estimate. I think that would help the committee. Uh, and I appreciate most of all this work you're doing to figure this out. Sure, no problem. I, can I appreciate it too. I, I think one of, the, one of the reasons that this has never moved, well, there's a couple of reasons that it hasn't never really happened. And obviously one is expense. Um, um, I, I think you make a compelling case about pickleball in, in that sense. I think that there's also been a sense that the tennis courts, they provide a, they take up a lot of space, which is in short supply. They have an impact because we already know that this is an area with, with drainage problems. And of course they're very impervious. Um, and there are a lot of tennis courts in our area. There's like 32 courts within a, a few I have public courts within a handful of miles, you know, within an easy bike ride or 10 minute drive from Station Circle. And so I think that's one of the reasons why we've been hesitant to invest that kind of money, even though we'd love to have everything. I mean, I personally love tennis, but I think that the idea of investing that kind of money in tennis when there are when there are many tennis options in our area and there may be other recreational needs that are not as well served just has often sort of made us hesitate to commit the money to that. I wonder about possibilities of something. Did I understand correctly that, let me ask you a question first, so that you, you put pickleball is basically two pickleball courts take up the space of one tennis court or is it the same size as the tennis court? Two pickleball ball courts will take up one tennis court. So he recommended putting four in and just leaving one tennis court. Um, we talked about that. I mean, and, and I agree with Michelle. In the beginning, when we first bought this, um, you know, in 2014, you know, pickleball really wasn't completely on the scene um, in our area. Um, my mother lives out in the lived out in Chester County, and they don't have a Parks and Rec committee, and they just they created one and installed a pickleball court. That was the first thing they did and they could not believe the explosion out there. Um, I had someone reach out to me from Haverford Township begging me not to go forward with the, the repavement. I don't even know how she found out about that we were doing this in Narberth in 2014 and saying, really look at having pickleball courts. And then we did. And talking to Mark and, and knowing, talking to Haverford Township, you know, the courts, and if you get on a Margate or if you go on the sea aisle, the courts are just always packed. And so Mark just suggested this time around on the quotes, we talked about pickleball. He goes, I would install four. He goes, at most parks, I'm installing more pickleball courts um, than tennis courts, or I'm refurbishing them to add to pickleball courts. Um, so that this why this quote, quote is a little bit different than the one we just got in 2015 that he's recommended um, for. He also submitted a design for us, so you can visually see it, how it would look. So mm -hmm. Melissa, the pickleball courts would require the same repairs as the tennis courts, right? That you'd still need to resurface the, the court for pickleball. Let's say we just turn it all into pickleball. We'd still need to do- There's no resurface, and... um, it's only a paint job. And that's- but what I'm saying from now, right? So now the court is in poor repair. Right. We'd you, still you, need to repair it before yes. putting in pickleball. Okay. Correct. Yes. Okay. Yes. So can may I, I I may ask you a question that you're not going to like that I'm asking. I'm sorry, but I have to. What what would does this does this estimate more or less scale? So it's something in the range of 120 to 160 thousand to do all three tennis courts. But if you say. Don't, don't hate on me, I'm just asking because I have to. Suppose you just did one and you turned it into two pickleball courts. Would that would be assume it's roughly a third plus a little bit more since, you know? 
I don't think you like could do with a dollars. I don't think you could do that with a process, Michelle, with a post concrete tension. It's a whole process where they remove all the fences. Mm -hmm. I have pictures on how they do it. Um, and well, I, I, I watched the last one. They really wait, have to, what? I'm sorry. You can't, you can't do it in what? The, okay. You can't Why? just, just uh, because they just wouldn't dig up one part of it, of uh, the one court. It's a whole process where they, it, it just would look, Ed, can you possibly help me with this on um, the process of this? No, no, to... no, I'm not talking about, I wasn't, I wasn't asking about leaving. I was like wondering if, if we were to eliminate the other two courts and turn it into like green space or something and have one pickleball court, uh -huh. like what would the cost of, like what or two pickleball courts, like so basically two, one tennis court. I, I don't know. Two pickleball I mean, courts. the thing is the recommendation from the Parks and Rec and we, as we submitted to the designs has always been to maintain that space. We've investigated and looked at green space, um, especially with the issue of, um, you know, the flooding underneath, there's a tunnel of the water going underneath. We've talked about what to use that space as for over three years. And we could not, you know, the only, we don't understand what, nothing else seemed to work within our designs. And so we've all decided that the pickleball courts and the chemist court should remain as is and not turn into green space. We were finding other green space within our park system. All right, can I, can I just suggest something here, which is that we, uh, we pause the tennis court discussion because I know Eric and Ed have to leave soon. And I think it might be good to get rec boards, other requests and other comments out while they're still here. And then we can come back as a committee. Does that sound okay, okay. Michelle and Ron? Okay, so um, let's, let's pause the discussion on tennis courts. So Maureen, do you wanna uh, go over any other I don't think we had Topics. anything else. So it was just those two issues. Well, I know you had, you know, you had that the work you did with KCBA that had a, a walking path and a removal, removing the uh, scoreboard. I think. Yeah. I, so, I have, so we have we have lots of <laughs> we have lots of discussions that we've had about the the two facilities, and it's hap like I'm happy if you want to schedule a meeting to go through those, but um, those are like sort of bigger projects that I'm not sure, I'm not, I'm not prepared to go through them right now. Can we've I, had plans, we've had pictures, yeah. we've gone round and round, um, so okay. I, I don't know. Fred, can I interject on, on off of what Maureen is saying in regards to that? Because I, I agree with Maureen um, that we've had bigger. So the KCBA <laughs> designs, we would like to know if, if the infrastructure has looked at them. And I was on a Zoom meeting um, this past July um because we had to pick up i don't know fred if you were on that I, I, i'm forgetting who was on that meeting i think believe ed you possibly were on that meeting i don't think and I then we fine-tuned the questions i fine-tuned and went through step by step all the questions it was over 35 questions with kcba to get the final designs we had taken out those walking paths within the park um and so i'm wondering did the final designs get to you guys for the infrastructure to no, look at. I have not no. seen it. We I have not seen, not seen it. it. I would love so to we need see to, it. Yeah. If you, if you still, yeah, if you still stand by, then we should have a discussion. You know. So okay. I, I didn't know if you had so, any of those elements you were ready to talk about, but it sounds like you'd want to have a, a larger discussion at some other point, which we can do. So um, we'll we'll set that up at a, at another time because I, I don't think. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. If Rob and Michelle have seen those KCBA. The final images. I mean, no, it was I awkward because we, we we stopped working with KCB, so it, you know, it's kind of messy. Well, no, we had um, we we actually Krista wanted to make sure that since we paid a lot of money, Maureen, we all discussed this at our meetings that for those those designs that you know we wanted to you know make sure them accountable and f f show us the final things that we approved and wanted to submit to you guys. So that's why last July, I forget who's on the Zoom meeting. I can find out we went extensively over what happened. So um, I'm not sure where we stand after that okay. meeting we have so, received. So we will we, find the designs. Are we, I'm sorry, are we saying that they're not working on this project at all anymore, technically? And then I have a follow-up. So was that a yes? Did, did I understand that right? I think they, they, they would not be available engagement. to work on it. Okay. Well, so I, I don't know, I actually I don't know. That's a, that's a Matt question, right? So. No. Well, a question that I always have in these cases, and I don't know that there's anybody on the call that can necessarily answer it, but it's, I think it's worth asking is whether or not when we receive the final 
work product of their work, whether it can be in in a machine readable format. You know, some, some what uh, I mean, if it's if they do use any version of CAD, it can be opened in another version of CAD, so that we have the capacity to continue to work on those designs on our own, I, I, or make a minor change. It's not it's not as crazy as it sounds. Um, you know, I mean, I think sometimes when you just have a PDF, you're kind of locked in, and then people are making handwritten notes. And I, I just, it's this is sort of a broader question of what rights we have to the work that engineers or design professionals do. Um, I don't know. Eric is on the call. He could probably answer whether that's completely non-standard. It's something you would need to specifically ask for, or whether that's something I, that will be reasonable um, to ask for. So I, I don't know specifically the details of what work was done, but generally uh, when work product is produced for a client, uh, the client, client can retain um, final copies uh, of that material, of those plans. So you'd have to so check exactly suggest, with them, but generally, yes, that is something that's obtainable. I would like ask whoever has contact with them from the Parks and Recreation to see if we can obtain file copies, you know, whatever machine readable format they, they use. I think okay. it could be helpful to have those things. Um, the yeah. issue, can I just jump in on that, Michelle? The issue was we kept giving them the KCBA, the final um, updates, and then we saw that it was going to be going to a council, uh, some sort of meeting, and we realized that none of the recommendations were what we had said. And um, so we went back in, especially on Ju in July of 2020, and had an extensive meeting. And I went through, and he actually, as I was sitting there, he was removing things. And adding things and what we find what we had all discussed in the committee meeting. So our concern was prior to that is why wasn't our final recommendation the final product that was supposed to be presented to borough council or whatever meet, committee had asked for it, um, and it was completely different. Yeah, I um, don't have an answer to that because I was totally I, we did, and we didn't have an process, answer. To but you. yeah, that sounds that sounds That's, really frustrating. It was. Okay, so so we'll need to address this in a, at a later meeting. We'll we'll try to. We'll try to figure out. Um, I'm, I'm not. Yeah, I, uh, I. I don't think we can enjoy. I don't think we can figure this out right now. But we will. We will get this sorted out, and we will ask uh, Rec Board to, you know, go through the recommendations. Uh, you know, as exemplified in this KCBA report, right? And then we can talk about specific things from that uh, later on, once people have time to prepare. Okay. Sound good. All right, and then the, the last topic I wanted to, to hear was I, I know you discussed the uh, the skateboarding equipment, the potential donation of the skateboarding equipment. Um, um, at the at the time, we're not ready to make any recommendations on the skateboarding equipment because they did not provide us with a lot of detail, and we decided we asked them to bring back more detail on um, size, um, you know, how much it weighed, what the material was. So we had asked that for both parties who who discussed with us. So they will come back and they will give us the information and then we'll bring it back to this committee. All right. I mean, Wait, I think it's just who are we talking about? The, uh, who's the day? I'm not sure. I'm a little out of the loop on this discussion. Well, can, Is we, it somebody can we just that hold off on we're... this until we're ready? We, we weren't, we're not prepared to bring this to yeah. this group yet. Okay. I wasn't, I wasn't oh, okay. sure if you were able to. All right. So I Thank think, you. I think really. I think really what the borough needs to do is the borough needs to inspect this and that'll give you the information as well that you need right I mean do you think you're you're prepared to you know I think it would help you if we actually had this inspected right who, who no, is responsible for inspecting it this is, we're, no we're not prepared to ask you to do anything so no, we're not we're, asking okay, back to you would we need something right okay all right it's a big all caps bold hold off got it okay <laughs> We will await further uh, input. All right, thanks. Okay, um, now I know some folks have to leave the call soon. Um, I don't know. Uh, all right, so so really everything. So going back to tennis courts, I guess. Uh, Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know that I'm I'm prepared to. You know, it's it's a lot of money. I don't know that I'm prepared to issue a, a recommendation um, to go ahead at this point, just because it's more than we have budgeted for the for the parks right now, and it's not clear what kind of grant funding is available or what kind of, you know, what the final bill for and, the for the borough tax. And it really would be great be. great to see this in the context of the whole recommendation from KCBA that it sounds like we've never seen. I mean, that would be a key part of understanding. 
it, I mean, in some ways, what I often feel frustrated when we have these discussions, it's nobody's fault at all. No, when we talk about bits and pieces of our parks is that we don't really have a master park plan to sort of inform this decision making in a, in a holistic way. Um, but, but it sounds like it sounds possibly like what you've already done through parks and recreation with KCBA is at least the beginning of something very much like that. So okay. I would really like to see that. Michelle, can I just say something for everybody who has been parks and rec committee, we have been working on a master plan for three years and um, it's truly for three years. And we've had so many mock-ups, draw-ups, and the KCBA was our final, final recommendation. And we also- Yeah, so we just need we, to see it. We, I, exactly, <laughs> and that's why I'm kind of like a little bit shocked that, you know, I think this is part of the problem um, that we're a little bit frustrated with. We don't know the process. Like um, we have our, now we're not having our monthly meetings. Like every other month we have our meetings. Um, extensive meeting notes are taken by Mary Kay. Um, and then we just don't know, I think it's the element of what we have actions to be taken, working with your committee or working with the other committees, how to get them done appropriately or quickly or so you know what we're talking about. I think we're just missing that, that linkage. And, and if we could be you know, told what to do a little bit better to make it better in our end, which we should be doing, we would love that input. Um, you know. All right, I so know some of us directly uh, talk with Ed Harmon, like especially NAA and um, Friends of Sabine Park um, and Fourth of July Committee. We've had that. We have a communication where we, if we have to work on something, we, we do that directly. But to make it easier and so we're all not just doing the same thing over and over, we would love some input on in how we can make this work a little bit better. I think that we're talking, so I think Michelle's right. I think that the KCBA, the, the things that are on that sort of master planning stuff are things that would go into our long-term capital plan, right? These are things that cost over $5,000 and they're designed to last, you know, they, they'll, they'll last more than five years. I think that's the, the rule for it. So these are substantial things that should be budgeted for um, in the long term. And the tennis courts definitely fit under that. I think the signs are something we can do right now. The tennis courts are something we'll need to plan and budget for if, if we're going to do it. And I think that goes, that's also true for other, you know, changes in that KCBA document. So probably what we should be doing is uh, working from that and working from the, the, the long-term recommendations to come up with long-term capital uh, budgeted items. And then once they're in the long-term capital budget, you know, the borough manager, they stare the borough manager, you know, the borough manager, they're staring the borough manager in the face every time the borough manager opens that up. So Burr manager is just thinking about, okay, how are we going to implement this? When are we going to do this? So basically it puts it onto the official books for the borough. So I think that's going to be the, the next step for this. And I think we're not ready to do that right now. Yep. Um, so I, uh, I have a question and a suggestion, Fred, just because we do have a partnership with, um, as you know, uh, Narbeth A and St. Margaret CYO has been supplying and, and helping with the, the costs for most of the Narbeth Park um, field maintenance um, over the past 30 years. Um, we have in, um, gave money for the baseball netting, so did St. Margaret CYO. If we open up a discussion with these two organizations, um, would this help if I talk to um, the borough manager in, in setting up in a meeting like we did with the baseball netting to go over the financial part? We did this with Sean, and this was very helpful. We bring in our treasurer. We bring in the treasurer for the St. Margaret's and we, we look at a sort of other funding sources, maybe NIDA, I, I don't know, and maybe help move this along for the tennis courts, pickleball court renovation. Uh, I think it will be, uh, let's hold off until we, uh, we have our new borough manager in place and then we can, we can <laughs> yeah. talk about that. So um, yeah. not right but now. Clearly, clearly. <laughs> Once the once the new band for a manager starts, I mean, absolutely part of onboarding is to make sure that um, that they have meetings with like all all the important stakeholder groups, including parks and recreation, and they will no doubt attend meetings and want to be briefed on what you're doing. And we'll take your your recommendations about what other third party organizations are appropriate to meet with. I think they'll they'll take it. So I I, I well, that's a long winded way of saying yes. Yeah. Absolutely, it makes sense. But it's going to be a few months before we're, we're ready to set that up. Um, okay, so 
I think Michelle or Rob, do you have anything else for um, Rikeboard and NA? I think I think the way we've got it is we're we're going to bring the signs proposal and uh, possibly looking at the regulations to full council, and then we're going to try to set up a time in the future to discuss the KCBA recommendation. Maybe have that. I don't know if I'm not sure if we can have it formally presented by KCBA or whether um, maybe Rikeboard will lead that discussion or something you know something in the next few months. Um, with an eye okay. toward adjusting the long-term capital plan. Okay. So who's, who was going to be, who's sort of delegated with the, the sort of ownership of reviewing the regulations and ordinances and, and making recommendations for updates so that we make sure we keep that on a, on like a clear time frame. So we make sure that whoever's doing that has access to whatever resources they need, you know, solicitor's time or whatever. I want to, I always feel uncomfortable when I, I feel like we've talked about doing that, but we don't, have a clear plan for is that we want someone from um, parks and recreation is going to work with ed and then i mean that might make sense and then yeah from there someone, work someone your way from out. parks and recreation and just, works with ed works and works with john and, mm -hmm. and just, Do we keep, need a maybe just keep, the committee, keep this committee in the loop so that we can sort of see if there if there looks like there's, there's any intervention points or need for you know for further resources or whatever we we sort of know what's happening Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think Maureen, I saw your sign in the chat. So um, if we could get that over to Ed and the solicitor, they could just match up the codes. Well, well I, could could we? Um, I sent some language to Frederick while we were talking. Um, basically, if council could approve that the borough manager purchase and install up to 13 signs indicating the rules of Narberth and Sabine Parks, Final design must be approved by the borough solicitor and the parks and rec board costs not to exceed $1,300. And that way it puts it in the borough office. It takes it off your plates. We can work directly with them and council doesn't have to do anything else. Well, if we're, if we're passing new, I mean, we will be involved if, if there's new code. I mean, if there's new uh, ordinances this, to cover. Right, that. this does not, if, yeah. if there's no ordinances, that's a separate matter. We, we want these done in a couple of weeks. We're not talking about a five-year plan for signs. <laughs> this should, should be quick. So. Well, the, the, the I, first council meeting where it could be approved is is uh, first Wednesday of April. I mean, it's not gonna be a couple of weeks, but. Um, okay, then, then all yeah. right. Not interested in new in new regulation as part of this process. We're interested in just producing signs. Okay, I, I thought I heard something about like putting no smoking on the signs, and I'm not sure if we have an ordinance to support that. So I, I so want to make sure I, that yeah, the sign. Right, we will make sure that the signs are legal. Well, maybe it, it may or may not require. I haven't looked at those ordinances so in a long time, so I don't know if they're if they're sufficient for the things that we need. Uh, but if there are new ordinances that we need, we will bring those to your attention. And then a year and a half from now, when the signs have to be redone because there's new ordinances, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. But ordinances take a while. And so I don't think the signs need to rely on ordinances. You, you want to have the signs as soon as possible, basically. And, you know, it, Yes. Yeah, so I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure I'm comfortable. Would be, I'm not would sure be I'm comfortable recommending so signs before we know that we have ordinances in order. I don't. The I mean, I think that it could be done before summer. The solicitor. But I think would, we could approve the funding the now. Signs. Okay. I mean, I'm, I'm totally comfortable approving the funding, but I feel like we shouldn't actually send them to be manufactured until. I mean, it's not. It doesn't take. A year and a half to do it. I shouldn't take it. I to understand, update, but the you know, solicitor could do it offline without going back to council again. Why do we have to go back to council again? Go to the solicitor, then go back to council again. I don't understand. Well, no, it's that. just that the, it's just it's just that if the solicitor feels like we need to renew, re, re, rewrite, or update, or in some sense change an ordinance in order to support the things that parks and recreation wants to do, he's mm -hmm. just going to need to give it to council to approve legally. That's yes, all. That's yes. the only reason and, why. Yeah, but barring that happening, about. right? But if that doesn't happen, let's just move forward without going back to council again. Let's. Why are we putting up extra roadblocks just in case something happens? If that happens, we don't meet the conditions. We don't buy the signs. 
Well, you know, we'll, we've got your recommendation. We'll, we'll I'll present that to council and we'll see what everyone decides. I mean, I, I think everyone agrees that we should have signs. The, so, okay. Uh, and I will bring it up at the, at the, uh, the workshop yeah. meeting. I think it's a small enough project that we may be able to approve it then. Sometimes, uh, you know, the larger, uh, I, I think, yeah. So we should, we'll discuss it at the, at the workshop meeting and see if uh, we can approve it then. Otherwise, I'm sorry, my dog is going off here. Um, can I, can I bring something back to the KCBA regarding something? Um, this was our final, uh, was submitted November 16, 2020 to Borough Council and this committee. Um, uh, Fred had commented in December of 2020 about receiving it and had some, a quick question. Um, and then we saw a different design um, within um, an email and that's why that had showed the open um, oh, stream as our final recommendation. So that's why we came back in July of 2020 and had to revisit the assignment. So that's where, that's why the, and it was an ad hoc meeting with myself, Sean Metra, KCBA, and Jonathan Peterson, who was new to our committee, who actually had never done any work with on this project at all. He was on the committee. So that's where um, we had to go back because the final, final, we didn't know why all of a sudden the stream was in the final designs that was to borough council and it wasn't the original ones that we had submitted um that's why that meeting was called in july of 2020. all right so that was a concern for us because the stream was never um ever recommended by us so does that does that clarify somewhat what i, I we didn't know what was going on either that's why yeah, we I, I think I think it was an unsatisfactory on how to communicate with the communities. It was an unsatisfactory result from KCBA, but yeah, further communications is, um, I think you should probably be meeting with us annually at least with you know funding requests and and general requests. Um, I mean, as as they come up, we can you can schedule um, you to appear here and sort of tell us. I what, mean, I uh, guess our question is that. I guess our question is, is when we recommended that, we, we sent a recommendation along for that KCBA drawn. And this uh, kind of applies to everything that we have done, even with the signs that Maureen's talking about that we've sent our recommendations along with the park regulations and the permit. Um, we don't get a, either, we are, we're not getting a response. We're not sure if people are seeing it or if it's being forwarded to all committee members. What is the recommendation that we should be doing? Can that be given to us now? Uh, the recommendation obviously this is- was submitted. The recommendation is you should you should come before a committee. You should say, okay, this is appropriate for infrastructure committee, or this is appropriate for finance and administration. I think those are the two committees you're likely to work with. You should say, okay, here's our recommendations. When can we come and, and speak at your committee? And okay. you know, then so that, that's so that just puts you well, into the, the process. Okay, so they we've been doing the formal email, so which with our whatever work we have done, so that hasn't been enough. So we will do formal email and suggest a, uh, to talk in front of the committee, correct? Should yeah, we continue both? That, you know, recommendations that, that rise to the level of council action need to be brought to council formally. So then, you, you know, you need to come to a committee and, and, and talk to us. You know, recommendations yeah. that, are, that are something that Harmon can do, those can just be done with the borough management. You don't need to come to council for those. Um, Okay, so but we'll do it through email and ask you to come to the committee. We'll submit our yeah. work. So, so like your, your, kind of preview first. Your, your routine repairs list should be handled by Ed, and that doesn't need to come to, right. to the committee. Okay. But I mean, this is a perfect example. We did submit this 2020, our final recommendations for the okay. KCBA. I, I have where the is it? I don't usually, I mean, so I, I, I do sometimes miss emails. I'm not going to say it couldn't have been me, but where would this, who would it have been from? I'm disappointed that I missed this because I'd like to see it. What, who was it to and from? How did this work? I mean, I, I think it's important. Was it to all of council? I'm looking through my emails, Michelle, and I'm just trying to see where who it's sent to. So I'm just sort of on the side. I mean, it, it was sent by Krista. That's what. That's the procedure that we usually do. 
and we have been doing from everyone who has been chair. And Chris has been our chair for a couple of years. Jim, you know, other people who have been our chair, Maureen, they were doing the same. Uh, that's why I'm just kind of looking. But we, why don't we, we would like to Melissa, know. Melissa, rather than, rather than looking backwards, let's look forwards and why don't we resubmit this um, yep. again to this committee and to all of council. Let's, let's start again. Yeah, I would love to see it. Thank you. All right. Uh, I know some people have been waiting here for, um, well, first of all, do we have any more questions? Uh, I know we've had to, had, we've lost uh, Matt and um, Eric because they had other other meetings. Um, but do we have any other questions? If not, I'd like to, to go to public comment here. Some people have been on for quite a while. Uh, Fred, were we going to discuss the road sign process? Uh, or, I guess we need traffic Matt. engineer. No, we need we need Matt and we need our traffic engineer, and they're not here. I was expecting them. I was so Matt was in, but the traffic engineer couldn't make it again. I, I okay. I'm not sure. I was expecting to see the traffic engineer, but uh, they they didn't make the meeting. So I have no update there. I don't I don't know anything. Um, Matt or the uh, or the engineer would be the people to talk to. All right. Any, uh, anything else from, uh, um, from Rob or Michelle? Otherwise, I'm going to open up to public comment then. Okay. Uh, so public comment. So Carol Marie, I see. I you. do have a couple things I want to talk about. Some with um, with Michelle and or Marie and Melissa on the parks. Also, the signs in the past that are now missing from Sabine Park would say park is closed from dusk to dawn, and that's an important addition because that gives the police a little more teeth to to throw out the um, the evening smokers. We have kids that come up to the Sabine Park and um, smoke cigars and whatever is into the cigars. And uh, so that gives the police a little more teeth into that one. And also, um, um, Melissa, the the KCBA report that you have also includes the Sabine Park um, plans, correct? And that was submitted because I was in on that one. So that one is submitted also. Um, the When you talk about grants, there were two very large grants that we missed out on. They were due March 1st. One of them was up to a $6 million grant from the state of Pennsylvania for parks and infrastructure. How do we talk to this council about the grants that are available that perhaps you're missing that really would benefit. I mean, that type of a grant, that would have taken care of the, um, you know, a field house in Sabine Park. It would have taken care of the, uh, in the parking lot, would have taken care of the tennis courts, would have taken care of a lot of the renovations on 201 Sabine. So, you know, these, these are things that we know about. And again, how do we come to you and how do you, how do you act on them? So Carol Marie, I think any time that you find out about a grant that you think is rel is a good idea and relevant, I think you should tell definitely notify the chair of finance and administration at a minimum. Um, that's something that I think she has already said is a priority to put in place um, a stronger strategic grant program. But at the end of the day, it's going to be the borough manager or somebody under the borough manager's guidance who's going to submit and apply for those grants. And so you really need a borough manager who's on board with that program and ready to commit the resources to it. And I think we've found one. Well, that is good. Now, what's happening with the 4th of July money? The 4th of July's uh, funds are always been said to go to the children of Narberth. And um, is 4th of July committee still a viable committee? And where is their money? Do you have an accounting of what's happening with the money from 4th of July committee? I mean, they're they're an independent group. They're not part of the borough. Um, Correct, so but they but they raise money for the children of Narber for the parks. Do you have any accounting of their money and what their money is doing? Because it's you know, if I'm giving money that's said to go for the children of Narber, I want to know that where it's going to be going for the children of Narber. Do you have any idea what's happening with that money? Uh, no, I don't know. You'd have to ask the 4th of July committee. Okay. Um, and then when we talk about a couple of things, you want to talk about the, uh, the cement blocks on the sidewalk on Sabine Avenue, there's several on the park side that are in bad shape. And there's one block in particular, that's just gravel. It's just chunked up, um, 
um, cement. And that happened when the gas lines were put in, but it was never repaired. And that's been mentioned multiple times, but nothing happens. So that's a huge trip hazard. Um, and as busy as Sabine Park is, it is a huge trip hazard. I'm also, sorry, are you, are you talking about sidewalks? Or are you talking sidewalk. about the road? Okay, sidewalk. so that's a, that's a code violation. Um, so you could report that to the code officer. Well, that's and, a that's a code on Narberth. That's not a private, that's not a resident. That is uh, on it's, the park side. It's, not, it's, it's part of the park sidewalk. Correct. So that's okay. not a violation on a resident. That is a violation on the borough. Okay, well, okay, I, I didn't understand. Um, noted. We need to tell Ed. Yeah. I mean, that's a public works issue. That is a public works issue. Um, so well, it, it's it's still a code enforcement issue. It's just that there's no uh, the, there's follow through that the borough would have to make to with the utility uh, instead of uh, the normal proceeds that would happen with a private residence. But yes, it's still a code violation. All right. So let's let's follow so, up on do that. You wanna, the, do you want to come up to the uh, to the park and I can show you where it is? Let's, let's follow up on that with the utility. Let's let's make that a uh, I don't know if the utility is happening during the time of the utility, but it's not where the utility uh, line is. It's a couple blocks in from the utility line. Well, it was either Pico gas or water or aqua water. It was one of the two. Okay, we'll we'll look into that internally, um, and hopefully we'll get the utility to to make it right. Okay. If not, when you're doing the blocks, that would be another block to add on to the cement blocks. When you're doing blocks through Norbert, that would be a block to add on. Okay. And while we're talking about the disintegrating and ha trip hazards, have you looked up at the Sabine parking lot recently? There are chunks of asphalt and, and potholes of asphalt that make that a, a big tripping hazard. And that's, you know, someone walking through there going to the park and uh, falls and breaks their arm. That's a liability to the borough. So that is that that needs to be addressed sooner than later. I think the last time that that lot was paved was 20 years ago, and it's way past its prime. We will look into what kind of patching we can do um, to make it safe. I think it's beyond patching. The whole the whole lot is uh, falling apart. Now, um, when we're doing street sweeping, are you is the borough going to be putting a schedule together so all streets on both sides get swept? So say Monday, uh, six, these six blocks get done, and with the sign that says no parking on Monday from 5 a.m. to 7 a.m., and then the other side of the street on Wednesday, no parking from 5 to 7, you move your cars to the other side of the street. Is something like that going to be um, um, initiated so the streets do get swept, not just the streets downtown and a few select streets? I mean, we have a street sweeper, it's not like we're paying additional to have the streets swept and it would be a good idea you see it even in Norristown um you know it, it hasn't been brought up yet to, to me? make some yeah we haven't discussed that as a council yet uh the street sweeping is a new project so. well I just I brought that up on several over the years to see if okay. we can get street sweeping done on every street not just select streets since we own a street sweeper and we have the men that are uh available to do it all right. Thanks. Thanks for the recommendation, Carol Marie. I'm afraid there's other people waiting to comment, All so right. I'm going to cut you off right now. All right. Um, Joey Fisher, I understand you're here to comment as well. Yes. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, uh, well, my name is Jerry Fisher and I live on Williams Avenue. Uh, the reason why I wanted to join the call today is to request that our, our street right now is considered a snow emergency route. And we've had so many issues with this. Uh, so basically my request is we wanted to see about getting off of the snow emergency route. I've sent, uh, it's on behalf of myself and several of my neighbors. Um, I've sent Rob uh, several different letters from a couple of the neighbors detailing the reasons why uh, 
it would be better if our street wasn't on the emergency route. Um, Rob, have you had a chance to review that? Jerry, I'm, I'm gonna send that, I'm seeing that now, I'm gonna send that to Fred and to Michelle. Okay. Um, we weren't sure how the whole process works and how you even determine which street should be on, on the emergency route, but the way our, our street is a very small street, we, the way they plow, they, we, the right side has to move. Uh, they plow right down the middle of the street. So the whole right side, even though we moved, there's still snow there. Um, and what's been happening this past winter with like the six different snowstorms, um, it, 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 people have just been, you know, scrounging to find a place to park. So what they're doing is they're parking on top of the snow mounds um, or they're parking alongside of the snow, which uh, causes their car to stick out. And it's probably been about, I know, three times my, I witnessed it personally where the trash trucks can't get down the street. They have to back up. They have to go down and walk, bring all the trash up, go down, and um, then they have to back up the street. It was the same thing with a, a delivery truck. So it's it just makes more sense to just leave the cars on the street and then dig out. I mean, I know that I, I think we were told that the reason for the um, us being on an emergency route is so uh, emergency vehicles can get down the street. We've never had any issues with that before we went on the route. So anyway, that. It's, I've presented the, the details. I, I don't want to take up a lot of everyone's time. Well, okay. can I just say something? I, I live sure. in Williams also, I'm Kathy Geiger. And sure. this policy is relatively new for our street. I think it's only been in within the last 10 years, maybe eight years ago. And I've been here 35 years and I've never seen it more of a problem um, until being on this no emergency route. And I know the borough previously, when we complained, told us, well, it's because to get a fire truck down here, I get an ambulance down here. But the way the plow is doing it, it's, it's not going all along the curb. So it's just going straight down the street the way it was the previous 25 years. So people have to move, they have to find a place to park, they have to dig out their car from wherever that is, and then they got to dig out the car, the snow in front of their homes, and it, which has turned to ice at that point. And the bottom of the street has no homes living right on front, it's a side of their home. So the thing about that is nobody shovels those, snow, those, those parking spaces out. So if we had everyone was still able to park on both sides, top to bottom, both sides, they have to shovel it out to get their car out. And then the street is clear. The way it's going right now with these snow mounds, it's true. I, I know Jerry's seen a number of times. I've seen it a number of times. They can't get down the street. They have to back up. So it just doesn't seem productive. And, and, and I, I don't understand uh, how or how we can go about getting this rectified. I mean, can they plow all the way down along the curb? I mean, can, they would have to do several sweeps down our street to make sure it's clear. Do you know what I mean? All right, I'm, so I, I wasn't familiar with this, you know, snow emergency route. I'm looking it up in, in borough code and I don't even see Williams in the legislation saying that it's a snow emergency route. So it was I, I'm not, not sure what happened. Yeah, I don't know what happened either. I remember talking to someone years ago and they said, oh yeah, well, we're thinking about putting Williams Avenue on the snow emergency route. And I was like, why would you do that? There's 
nowhere to go. Where was where are the people going to go? And they didn't do it for a couple of years. And then all of a sudden, it just they just did it. But um, and they would just ticket. So I started thinking it was just to generate revenue. But I mean, this past winter, this snow, the way that worked out, it just was really a hardship and was not safe if there was a fire. You, I don't even know if, I mean, a van, an Amazon van couldn't get through. So I don't see how a fire truck would be able to get through. Okay, thank you for your for your comment. Um, I think we're just gonna have to look into this um, offline and try to figure out um, whether it's appropriate to leave Williams on the list or, or whether it's something that can be can be removed. It, it does, it, yeah. Oh no, sorry. I mean, do you think that this is 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 also the kind of thing that would fall within the parameters of the policy that Matt has been working on developing for how people who live on a given street or block can, can, can have a sort of specific process to go to, to the borough manager and petition for a change, whether it's one way or signage or a stop sign or something, you know, it could even be something that involved, you know, the designation of the street as a one way or some kind of parking designation, right? I mean, this seems like it would fall under that policy. Yeah, we, so, wouldn't, need the, we wouldn't need the highway engineer, I don't think, but uh, it, it's the same kind of idea. And I agree that there should yeah, be a system I, in place. And it's something we really have been working in to, to, with Matt and been working hard on putting in place a, a way to, to have those reviews happen so that they're sort of fair and equitable so that anybody can do it through the same process. Okay. Uh, Ed, are you still with us or are you? Uh... <coughs> well, okay. So we'll, we'll look into this offline. Like I said, I, I, the, the, the code has a list of which streets are, are snow uh, emergency routes. And Williams is not on it, so I don't know. Um, I don't know if there's an updated list somewhere um, right. that they're using. So I, I, we'll have to look into it. Is the is the okay? Answer. Well, yeah, and 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 we are one way. I don't know if Jerry mentioned that, but we are one way, and okay. we do have people coming up up the street as well. So all right, well then I'll follow up with you, uh, or follow up with you, Rob, or if that's all right to find out how we end up with this? Yeah, yeah. Rob, why don't you stay in, stay in contact and just let them know when we have more. Yeah, them. it kind of bridges the public, you know, safety and infrastructure committees. Um, yeah, so let's stay in touch and we'll figure that out. Well, thank you very much. I would really appreciate your assistance with this. Yeah, thanks okay. a lot, guys. Yep, right. we still have uh, <laughs> two other folks who've been patiently waiting, so. Uh, Mr. Okay. Boudot or Mr. Markman, do either of you want to unmute and uh, do you have public comment? I, I don't have any public comment. I'm just what, listening. Okay, thank you. All right. Yes, and I see Ed had to leave, so thanks. Uh, all right. And uh, so, Mr. Boudot, five seconds. Any comment? No, no, no comment. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, thanks everybody. Uh, I think we're gonna uh, adjourn the meeting at 2.24 then. Thank you, Fred. Thanks everyone. Thanks, thanks everybody. Fred.